Hello friends, uh, welcome to Learners Planet. Friends, this is our second session for real functions. In the previous session, we discussed different type of sets. So we discussed natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, positive and negative integers, real number, complex numbers, and various other sets, right? In this session, we'll be taking some more terminologies related to functions. So let's begin the session. Now friends, uh, let's discuss what are related quantities. You understand the term itself implies that it's uh, there is a relation, right? What happens when two quantities are such that the change in one is accompanied by the change in other, or we can say the value of one quantity depends upon the other, then they are called as related quantities, right? Here we can uh, take the example of area of a circle, that's pi r square. Here pi is a constant. and r is variable, right? If r increases, area of the circle increases. If r decreases, that means radius of the circle decreases, then area of the circle also decreases. If r is doubled, area will be four times. If r is halved, area will be one fourth, right? So here area and radius, they are related to each other, okay? So the, these are known as related quantities, okay? Next is uh, variable and constants. Friends, variables and constants, uh, we have been studying these terms uh, since our uh, fourth and fifth and sixth grade, right? So you are, you must be very much clear about what are variables and what are constants. Constant, the value of a number cannot be changed. Suppose um, if I talk about maybe two, right? Maybe three, maybe pi, right? Value of all these are is constant, right? You cannot say two is anything, any other number. Similarly, pi is pi is a constant, right? Now, what is variable? A variable is a symbol which can take any value out of the given set of values. Suppose I take x. Now, x can be 1, 2, 3, maybe any real number, maybe any rational, irrational, any number, right? So, x is known to be variable, right? The quantities like height, weight, time, temperature, profit, cells, etc. are examples of variables. The variables are usually we denote x, y, z, u, v, w. You can take any alphabet to represent a variable, right? So mainly there are two types of variable. One is independent variable and other is dependent variable. The variable which is uh, which can take any, any, any value, any arbitrary value we can say it's independent variable, right? Suppose here it's x. Now x can take any value or here I just can take an example of maybe circle area as we have just talked. It's pi r square. Here r is independent value, right? r can take any value, right? Maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever, right? So r is an independent variable. Next is dependent variable. So a variable whose value depends upon the independent variable is called dependent variable. Over here, if r increases, a increases. If r decreases, a decreases. That means a is also variable. It value also changes. Uh, value of a also changes. But what happens? It changes according to the changes in radius. That means a is uh, dependent variable and r is independent variable. Right? Now, we have just discussed about constant. A constant is a symbol which does not change its value. Uh, or we can say retains the same value throughout a set of mathematical operations. Generally, we denote A, B, C, something like that. There are two types of constant, absolute constant. A constant which remains the same throughout a set of mathematical operations is absolute constant. All numbers, we can say 2, root 3, pi. We have already taken the examples. These are actually absolute constants. Okay. And arbitrary constant is a constant which remains same in a particular operation but changes with the change of reference, right? Suppose we have the example of this straight line. It's x by a plus y by b is equal to 1. In this particular case, only a and b are constant, right? If the case changes, the value of a and b will be changed. And in that case, we call them as arbitrary constant, okay? So here A and B are constant, but they are different for different lines. Therefore, A and B are arbitrary constant. So I hope you are clear with the definition of variables and constant and different types of variable, dependent, independent, both the types of variables, then absolute constant and arbitrary constant. Arbitra arbitrary constant is in the particular operation and absolute constant are constant once for all. Okay. 
Now friends, let's discuss about intervals. Now what are intervals? A set of numbers can be represented by intervals. Uh, see friends, in case of functions or in case of mathematics, when we have to represent a set of numbers, suppose I have to make a set of numbers from 1 to 100, right? Now it's not possible every time to just write all the numbers in a particular set, 1, 2, 3, till 100, because it becomes a lengthy process. So in mathematics, what we do is we represent the number uh, in terms of intervals. Here th there are two or uh, three types of intervals are there. It's open interval. Open interval that means 1 to 100. That's A to B. That means we have to take all the numbers from A to B but we, A and B both of them are not included. Right. Suppose I take an example say 1 and 100. Right. So all the numbers from 1 to 100 will be taken but 1 and 100 both of them will not be taken in case of open interval. This, re this is represented by the small bracket. Getting my point? So in this case suppose there is any number in between uh, 1 to 100. So x suppose that is the number. So x will be greater than 1 but less than 100. There will not be any equal to sign. So 1 and 100 both of them are excluded from this set. Okay. So open interval a to b. We can call it as uh, from A to B, but A and B, both of them are not included. Obviously, we cannot represent all the numbers between A to B or between 1 to 100 because in this case, uh, what we are discussing is the set of real numbers. We are considering real number set. So, it's not feasible or not possible for us to show all the real numbers between these two, right? So, what we do? We represent 1 to 100 with this bracket, okay? Closed interval, that is endpoints are also included. The difference between open and closed is what the, uh, the single thing that in this, uh, in this case A and B are not included, but in this case A and B are included. Suppose I take 1 to 100. In that case, if any number is there between 1 to 100, then X, that is any number between 1 to 100, that will be greater than equal to 1 and less than equal to 100. So you should be clear about this too. Okay, this is open interval, this is closed interval. That means you have to consider all the numbers from 1 to 100 inclusive of 1 to 100. Here you have to consider all the numbers from 1 to 100 but exclusive of 1 and 100. Getting my point? Now the third case is open and closed interval, right? Uh, the open closed interval can be like um, closed open interval and open closed interval right closed from this side but open from this side or uh, i'm sorry and uh, other cases open from this side and closed from this side right so in this case what happens if x is any number between a and b in that case x will be greater than a but it will be less than equal to b suppose i take example 1 to 100 this side, the bracket is a square bracket. This side is a small bracket. And I have an element x. So, how do we represent that? x is greater than 1 but less than equal to 100. So, here it's greater than sign. And here it is greater than equal to sign. For x, it is less than equal to sign. Getting my point? Just note the difference between these two. And in the next case, when it is closed open interval, then this will be the same. Right? So, in this case, x is greater than or equal to 1 but less than 100. Okay. So, from this side, we are not including the number but from this side, we are including the number. Right. So, whenever we are having square bracket, the number closer to it is included and when we are uh, having this uh, small bracket, that number closer to it or the number besides it, it's not included. Okay. So, th these are various type of intervals. Now friends, apart from these three types of interval that is open, close, open and closed and open, closed, right? From one side it is open and other side it is closed. So apart from these uh, sort of intervals, we have unbounded intervals as well, right? Suppose we represent A to infinity, right? This is actually extension of the same logic. Nothing uh, new is there. A to infinity, that means X, uh, any number x that is in between a to infinity. So, x will be greater than a less than infinity, right? So, uh, this is the representation here. In this case, x is greater than equal to a because we can see a square bracket over here. 
but it will be less than infinity. We can see a, a the circle bracket over here. That is small bracket over here. Getting my point? Here both the brackets are small, so x will be greater than minus infinity but less than b. Right? We cannot put the equal to sign because both the bracket signs are small bracket signs. Okay? And here minus infinity to b that means x is greater than minus infinity but less than equal to b because this bracket is square bracket okay so x is less than equal to b but x is only greater than equal to greater than not equal to greater than minus infinity okay and the interval minus infinity to infinity that means x is greater than minus infinity less than infinity that means x represent entire number line right that means this range represent the entire real number line okay that is the set r itself okay so i hope you are clear with all types of intervals open closed open closed and uh, unbounded bounded okay it's very important friends i just take few examples over here suppose i have this 2 to say 7 so x will be greater than equal to 2 but less than 7 right this is square bracket this is circle bracket suppose i have 2 to 8 so x will be greater than only greater than 2 but less than equal to 8 right if i have 3 to 15 then x is greater than equal to 3 less than equal to 15 so various combinations can be made okay our friends in the next session will be starting actual topic functions right we'll be discussing the basic terminologies related to functions what is domain what is range what is codomain and how do we find the domain and range of any function okay and what is the relationship between function and relations okay or what are the basic difference between relations and functions that we will be discussing in our next session do revise this session in the previous one bye bye